Mercury is the smallest planet in our solar system. For a long time, the tiny planet, which is smaller than the system's largest moons, was considered unreachable by a probe. It wasn't until the 1980s that an engineer had the crucial idea that made a probe to Mercury possible after all. In 2011, Messenger reached Mercury. But what did we find there? Was it worth the effort? And why was it impossible to send a probe to this planet for so long? We explain, show you the most exciting discoveries around Mercury, and show you why the planet could come to a sad end. Stay tuned and join us as we uncover Mercury secrets together. Exploring the planet Mercury Despite its proximity to Earth, Mercury was not further explored for decades after the first flybys by the Mariner 10 missions in 1974 and 1975. The main reason for this neglect was the immense difficulty of getting a probe into Mercury's orbit in the first place. The planet's proximity to the Sun means that any probe sent there will be thrown into violent rotations by the Sun's strong gravitational pull. If you will, Mercury has the most uncomfortable position in the solar system. Close to the blazing hot star, it's not only exposed to unusual temperatures and violent winds. The Sun's gravitational pull causes Mercury to tumble quite a bit, squeezing the smallest of the solar system's official planets quite a bit at the poles. The feat for which scientists had to find a solution was to slow down a probe even before the Sun's gravitational pull gets a grip on it. After that, the object would have to be skillfully steered into Mercury's gravitational pull. In this way, it would be bound to itself by the planet and would be safe from the Sun, at least as far as gravity was concerned. For a long time, this feat seemed impossible. NASA engineers calculated and calculated, but the same problem always arose. The fuel required for this maneuver would have made the probe too heavy for the other maneuvers and would have driven the cost of the mission to impossible heights. For a long time, the scientific world resigned itself to the fact that a Mercury probe was simply not feasible. But then, Chen Wang Yen came into the picture. In the 1980s, the exceptionally gifted orbital mechanics expert had an idea. Instead of developing new and heavy technology, she proposed a special route that a probe could take to naturally slow down its speed and then swing into Mercury's orbit in a fuel-efficient manner. Instead of flying directly to Mercury, the probe would have to take a longer, more complex route around the Sun, passing other planets several times. More specifically, calculations showed that the probe would have orbited the Sun about 15 times, passed Earth once, Venus twice, and Mercury three times, before finally slowing down enough to enter Mercury's orbit. The route was coherent, and the time required seemed negligible, given the viable solution of finally sending a probe to Mercury. The amount of fuel required for the longer flight was so favorable to previous calculations that NASA immediately accepted Chen Wang Yan's idea. Messenger went on its journey. This groundbreaking idea eventually led to the development of the Messenger mission. Messenger stands for Mercury Surface, Space Environment, Geochemistry, and Ranging. The mission was themed around finally unlocking the mysteries of Mercury that had remained unsolved since the Mariner 10 missions. The Mariner probes were part of a NASA program to explore the solar system's Earth-like planets, particularly Mercury, Venus, and Mars. Mariner 10, in particular, was designed to get closer to Mercury than any other human object had done before. Launched on November 3, 1973, it performed a total of three flybys of Mercury. The first on March 29, 1974, the second on September 21, 1974, and the third on March 16, 1975. During these flybys, Mariner 10 was able to map about 45% of Mercury's surface and to find out initial details about surface features, the magnetic field, and the atmosphere. Mariner 10 also noted that Mercury, like Venus, is the only planet in the system that does not carry a moon. Although Mariner was already yielding spectacular new knowledge, many questions remained. The curiosity of scientists in the 1960s and 70s was almost boundless. The entrepreneurial spirit was great, and NASA received immense sums of money from the U.S. government. Curiosity around Mercury 
was not to be satisfied until the new millennium. Equipped with state-of-the-art scientific instruments, Messenger was able to take more measurements than ever before. The surface was to be remapped and scientists were desperate to learn more about the planet's thin exosphere. Despite the brilliant idea and great preparation, getting Messenger to Mercury wasn't easy. The spacecraft had to perform several gravity assist maneuvers and maintain the right speed and course at all times. After a journey that took several years and covered billions of miles through the solar system, Messenger successfully reached Mercury's orbit in 2011. When it swung into orbit, the cheers were great, making Messenger the first probe ever to orbit the closest planet to the Sun. Mariner 10 had only flown past Mercury at such a distance that the measurement results were only moderately reliable. With the start of the mission on the ground, NASA had achieved another technological masterpiece. Messenger is still considered by experts to be a particularly successful demonstration of human determination and ingenuity. Despite the many challenges Mercury presented to science, one woman found the solution. Thousands of people worked on the mission for nearly three decades afterward. From the technicians and engineers who built the probe to the navigation specialists who launched it into space and then steered it safely on its long journey toward the Sun and Mercury. What did we find? The Messenger mission has greatly expanded our understanding of Mercury and provided a wealth of new information about the planet closest to the Sun. Among the most remarkable results of the mission was certainly the discovery of water ice in the permanently shadowed craters at the planet's North Pole. This discovery was truly a surprise, as frozen water on a planet where surface temperatures are extremely high was akin to a sensation. The presence of ice suggests that there are areas on the planet that do not receive sunlight and are cold enough to hold water in solid form. This naturally raised the question of whether liquid water could exist in marginal areas with temperate climates or even whether simple life forms such as microbes could exist there. So far, despite the messenger mission, neither one nor the other has been proven. However, experts believe that the violent particle storms arriving on Mercury from the sun make even simple life impossible. We can't be quite sure about that though, because we know from Earth that bacteria can survive and adapt here even in the most extreme environments. Another exciting confirmation was the measurement of Mercury's magnetosphere. Mercury's protective magnetic field has only about 1.1% of the strength of our magnetic field. The job of the magnetic field is, among other things, to protect the Earth from solar winds. Since Mercury has very little protection, this speaks for a very high particle radiation on the planet. Although the magnetosphere is very weak, it was an unexpected result because until Messenger arrived, it was always assumed that small planets like Mercury could not have permanent magnetic fields. Messenger also studied Mercury's thin exosphere in detail, finding that it's constantly being renewed by solar wind, meteorite impacts, and other processes. The measurement data provided surprising new insights into a planet orbiting so close to its star that it's actually a blazing hot and perhaps lifeless world. But Mercury showed striking characteristics of an active small planet throughout the mission, retaining its idiosyncrasies despite its proximity to the Sun. The spacecraft also mapped a variety of geologic features on Mercury's surface, including huge cliffs that stretch for hundreds of kilometers, and the massive Calorus Basin, formed by a massive impact. Other Features of Mercury Mercury is a planet of modesty, extremes, and very special appearances. Because of its unique rotation and orbit, the Sun appears in Mercury's sky as if it were rising, slowing down, moving backward, and then continuing normally before setting. A day from sunrise to sunrise lasts two Mercury years. This unusual cycle causes the surface of the day side to heat up tremendously from solar radiation and radiate its heat directly into space on the night side. Unlike other inner planets such as Venus, Earth, and Mars, the temperature differences on Mercury are not balanced by heat transport in an atmosphere. The Sun's gravity, and presumably the forces of Jupiter, have pushed Mercury into a fairly oblique orbit. 
It orbits the Sun on such a steeply inclined orbit that, as seen from Earth, Mercury comes directly in front of the Sun only about once every seven or Earth years. This rare event, when Mercury stands directly between the Earth and the Sun, is called a transit of Mercury. It's an impressive spectacle for astronomers and sky observers, where Mercury can be seen with simple telescopes and an appropriate filter as a small black dot in front of the bright solar disk. Another special feature of Mercury is its axis tilt. It is almost zero, which means that this planet has almost no seasonal changes. Earth, on the other hand, has a much more pronounced axis tilt, and we notice this through extreme temperature differences between day and night, as well as our seasons. Mercury under pressure We have already mentioned Mercury's unusual orbit, and also that Jupiter is suspected of exerting an influence here that should not be underestimated. Jupiter is next to the Sun, the largest and heaviest object in the solar system. In a certain way, the inner planets are gravitationally sandweighted by the Sun and Jupiter. Our Earth, Mars, and Venus can resist the compressive force of the largest planet very well by their own weight and mass. Model calculations and computer simulations, which should clarify the cause of Mercury's strongly inclined orbit, reveal the monstrosity. It seems as if Jupiter presses with all its force on poor little Mercury, which has little to oppose this force due to its small size and mass. It's probable that Mercury and Jupiter already had a little power struggle in the early days of the solar system, which finally pushed the tiny planet into its current eccentric orbit. Speculation and models indicate that Jupiter's continued gravitational influence over billions of years could further alter Mercury's orbit. Some of these models suggest that Jupiter could eventually perturb Mercury so much that it's ejected from its current orbit. In extreme scenarios, this could cause Mercury to crash directly into the Sun or even collide with another planet, possibly Venus or Earth. However, it's important to emphasize that such scenarios, although supported by mathematical models and computer simulations, are still purely speculative in nature. The exact future orbital motions of Mercury and its interactions with other bodies in the solar system are extremely complex and influenced by a variety of factors. So at the moment, we don't have to be afraid that Mercury will blow up in our faces soon. We bid you farewell today with this view of Mercury's Earth as Messenger saw it during its mission. Now tell us what you think about Mercury. What did you know about this planet so far? And which new facts surprised you the most?